No, nothing at all. Because there was no um, adoption society in 1925. In fact, if I waited another year, um, there was an adoption society. So I know a bit more about them. And there was, so there was simply no way of um, no. tracing them? No. You regret that, I assume? No. You don't? No. You've never been curious? I was curious in my teens. Um, but I thought suddenly, you know, what am I doing this for? I've got two parents who are very nice and I love very much. Um, I don't want to find out where I come from because it's, environment can change heredity, in my opinion. And uh, I was very happy. And you started, you were a professional actor very young, which we'll talk about in a moment, but wh what had you done before that? What had made you want to act? I was in school plays. And also, uh, my mother played the piano and my father played the drums. And we did British Legion concerts. And I did uh, comic songs. I also uh, did comic songs at the end of term school show and got into trouble with the headmaster doing uh, When I'm Cleaning Windows. <laughs> ah, which was regarded as quite a saucy song at oh, the time. Very saucy, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and was it a, a form being impersonation? Or no, 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 no. I couldn't impersonate anyone yeah. in those days. <laughs> but luckily, practically everyone else had the same accent as I had, <laughs> and they understood me. So how had you chosen that song? It was You'd heard it? I'd heard it, I'd learned it, I liked it. And um, when the school concert came up, I thought, well, I'll do it. I did. And apart from the acting, were you a good student at school? Yes, I was. I was at a secondary school, council secondary school. And right the way through, I was in the first three in the class, either first, second or third, mostly second and third, because there was a swat. He always came first. Leaving school at 14, which was, it was allowed at, the, at that time, but you had, to, you had to have permission from the school to go. Yes. Um, when you left school uh, in 1939 at 14, um, the day you left, which was usually a Friday, you had to go up to the headmaster's study and meet someone from the Board of Trade who said, what do you want to do? Um, and she said, I want to be an apprentice engineer. He'd say, right, you go to this firm on Monday morning and they'll give you a job. Then I come up and say, what do you want to do? I said, I want to go on the stage. I want to be an actor. I said, get to the back of the queue. So I got to the back of the queue. And by the time I got up again, I didn't even get a chance to say anything. I was just handed a card and said, that is a butcher's <laughs> in Morton. Be there at 8.15 on Monday morning. They want a boy who can ride a cycle as a delivery, delivery boy. So I thought, oh, I don't like that idea that very much. So after school... I was selling papers around the streets of Morden, and suddenly in the middle of the star, there was an advertisement, small boy wanted for London Musical. Apply um, Helvetia uh, Club, Gerard Street, London. So the next morning I uh, w went up to London, to Gerard Street, found the Helvetia Club, thought I was in heaven, it was full of chorus girls. Uh, I was asked by the person producing, what, what do you do for an audition? And I can still hear myself saying, I'll, I'll, I'll do, I'll do uh, Friends, Romans, Countrymen by Julius Caesar. <laughs> and I think they said, sorry, could you say that again? Anyway, I ended up doing that. Uh, I didn't get the part, but I got the understudy. And I also had to go across the stage every night with two goats and six pigeons. And when we were on tour, I had to share a dressing room with them as well. And all those decisions to leave school at 14 to go off and audition for the musical, did you tell your parents about all that or just do yeah. it yourself? Just went. Uh, no, I, I mean, I thought I was going to go and then come back mm. the same day. I didn't realise I was going to have to go on a, 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 a train to Blackpool, which I had to. But were, your parents were happy for you to leave school? Yes, yes. What would they have wanted you to do? Um, well, I'd probably been quite happy if I'd taken the job at the butchers in Morden because it would be another uh, wage coming in. But um, no, I didn't want to do that. And in fact, um, I think I got 28 and 6 a week and one pound paid for my digs. And I sent home a five shilling postal order, uh, which always came back in the form of a box with a cake and 
sweets and God knows what all in it. Um, and they seemed quite happy, and I was quite happy. Anyway, I got there and went on tour, then came into London Coliseum. And one day, um, our chaperone, who was the boy, the boy I was understudying, his mother was our chaperone. And um, she said, uh, Charles is going for an audition at the Strand Theatre on, whenever it was. Would you like to come along and watch? Because there might be one or two famous people there. And I said, well, yeah, I'd like to do that. So I went along the Strand. There was no scenery. It was bare stage. And the uh, director, Richard Bird, was down in the um, stalls. And there were these boys on the edge of the stage. So I hung back by the exit door, not wanting to get in the way. And suddenly, Richard Bird started yelling at me, don't waste my time, come on, come on. And I said, oh, I'm, not, I'm, 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 I'm just w watching. So, <laughs> no, come on, come on, come on. Thrust the script in my hand, said, read that. So I read it. It was a Cockney evacuee. I got the part. And then he said, you have to go to um, Oxford um, today. So I thought, well, I said, okay, fine, I'll go to Oxford. I've got some money. And this was a play called Cottage to Let. Yeah, yes. A, a wartime, a thriller. The very first spy yeah. thriller of the war, yeah. It never occurred to me to say to the people at the Coliseum, I won't be coming in this afternoon. So I don't know who, who dealt with the goats and the So pigeons. there's a dressing room full of animals. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and um, I got to Oxford. Uh, I think it was a Sunday. Uh, and quite late. And I was very small and carrying my big suitcase around with me. And of course, I hadn't had to worry about digs until now. And suddenly I got to find digs for myself. They've got no chaperone. So I went everywhere. I went to the um, police station. No one could help me. So I went to the theater and found the stage director. And I was on the verge of tears. And he said, what's the matter? And I said, I no, no, can't get no digs. I don't know where to live. And at that moment, this rather handsome young man came in and said, what's the matter with him? And um, Jerry Clifton, the stage director, said he can't find digs. So this young man who was playing the, the juvenile lead said, well, you, you go and find him some digs and I'll take him over to the Welsh Pony and give him something to eat. So he took me over to the Welsh Pony and this was, you know, rationing time. Ordered two mixed grills, tipped them onto one plate, and said, get that inside you, and went back to the theatre. Now on the Monday we start rehearsing and the young man who was playing the juvenile lead didn't appear. And apparently he'd been called up. So I never saw him. Well, roll forward 30 years. I'm sitting in the MGM studios in Elstree. And a very handsome young man comes over and says, is that the young boy I gave two mixed grills to? And I said, yes. It was Stuart Granger. And what did you say to him? I said, <laughs> I didn't know what to say. I mean, how he recognised me, I don't know, because I'd taken over from an actor who died and I was wearing a very grey wig. But uh, someone must have told him. And it's quite unusual now, for, but there was a much closer link then between stage plays and films. Successful plays were filmed quite quickly, and that began your film career in With Cottage 1941, to Cottage to Let. Yeah. And the real significance of that is that, that that's where you met your great mentor, Alistair Sermon. Yes, yeah. And in fact, I met him in the play, mm. and... Um, the Blitz started, and um, Alice's wife was pregnant, and so he, he, they used to live in Hampstead, and they moved out to the country. Alice was worried about the fact that I was living in London with my mother, and he said, you've got to get out of, of London and get somewhere in the country, so we're going to evacuate you and your mother, which they did, very kindly, to a place in the country. It was very odd because the Blitz settled down Everything had closed and it settled down, everything opened again. My mother couldn't stand the quiet of the country, she'd rather have the bombs. So she went back to London and we took the play, Cottage to Let, round all the army camps. And by this time, uh, there was a very odd atmosphere about the Blitz because people wanted to come back in. So we went back into Wyndham's. Having run, run there for nine months, we now went back in again and ran, I think, for another nine months. And that's when I, um, I met Alistair and uh, Naomi and um, got the film.